All right, let's go. All right, all right, all right, Tim. What, Tim? What? I hate to say this. What did you think of the uh, All Star Extravaganza? <laughs> well, you know what? I I didn't mind the night before the some of the skills competition. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't get over McDavid four for four, or and then he went eight for four for four twice. Yeah, eight, that's eight what for got eight me. on the plates, and they hardly even mentioned that. But uh, the All Star game, I mean. I hate to say it, but I was watching reruns of uh, Pebble Beach. It was just awful. What do you think? You know what? You know what I would do. First of all, I would, uh, I would, I would have Bettman. He's the guy. I would go in. I'd say I don't want you laughing and I don't want you joking during the game. The game is a joke because you, you notice the guys don't try too hard. They never have slap shots. What, what did you think, Cindy? Well, I, I I thought of the uh, the poor fans. I mean, they go there to think they're going to see you know the best of the best of the NHL, pay good money, and then they see guys out there fooling around and it's like it's a big joke and a party. I, I would resent it as a paying customer. Oh well, I think they I think they, the people that go there now expect <laughs> I, it. I said that wasn't even a good practice. Have I ever had a practice like that? But anyhow, I, I know how to cure all this. Have the NHL champions. Play for themselves like the All Stars. So let's say Colorado last year. Yeah, play the All Stars, and boy, you're going to see a game then. And I and and because first of all, the NHL champions do not want to uh, lose to a bunch of All Stars. That that's that's automatic. I remember, uh, I remember when this game used to mean something. Yeah, isn't the what, what's the history? Isn't there a good history? Oh, well, it, it started got- out pretty tough. I remember Bobby Hall going down to block uh, Bobby Orr. I mean, going down to block, uh, block Bobby Hall, and he and he and he. I thought he was dead. I mean, they actually blocked shots they actually, in an All Star game. He actually blocked a shot, and uh, I thought he was dead. Yeah, for the people who don't know how the All Star game started, yeah, it's pretty interesting. The All Star game started when uh, Eddie Shore hit. Ace, Ace Bailey. Bailey in Boston and Ohm cracked his skull and they yeah. thought he was going to die. They gave him the last rites, yeah. but he pulled through, but he couldn't play hockey anymore. And they wanted to raise money for him after he, you know, cause he was retired. So the Toronto Maple Leafs played the NHL in Toronto, in Toronto played the NHL all-stars and Ace Bailey and Eddie Shore. That's hands. how it got started. And that's how, and that was the first all-star game in sports. And now next year, we're going to be graced with uh, Toronto. The funny thing is, it was really hot down in Florida, and everybody loved it. And they're going to. And the day that they that they played was the coldest day of the year was, uh, in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know Toronto's good good spot to play it though, because it's a focal point. You got to get fly to Toronto, and then you fly out of there. And because it didn't look like it was sold out down no, south. No, I, I think Batman would probably be pretty upset seeing a lot of empty seats. And then about halfway through the game, a lot of people left. You know, it was too long, for sure. I, I mean, and, I, and nothing to Tim that I, that I saw. I thought the uniforms looked the same. Yeah, they did. <laughs> you mentioned that too, Cindy. I said, I mean, I like the color. I like the combo Miami colors. Vice. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, they did look an awful lot alike. Because they had the, a theme. The socks were the same, and the players were screwing up. I remember Nick Suzuki went down, and he passed it right to the defenseman. Yeah. Well, and the guy, and I, I, one of the guys, Simpson said, he goes, you know what? The players are having trouble now knowing who's on who team because it's just the shoulders. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just. I, and you, know, you know what really bothered me? I'll tell you what bothered me. Crosby and Crosby been in the league for nine hundred years and and carried himself with with style. They were sitting on a, 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 to get dunked in the water by some. Uh, if you shot down four uh, surfboards, you, you could you could. Yeah, dunk. they they just yeah. Then they had them golfing. You know, like it just you know what they look like. It looked like they were the uncool kids in school trying to be cool. That's yeah. what it looked like. You can, football. And hockey cannot play uh, 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 an easy game. They got to play it tough. Yeah, I know. 
I, I think there's stuff that they could, can do though. That like I think the big the biggest thing that went the crowd went crazy on the uh, skills is when. Uh, Alex Ovechkin's son went down and shot yeah. Roberto Longo. And you know the funny thing is nobody mentioned he's skating down and he's like doing the little beaver tail, like top of the ice, give me the puck at like <laughs> at seven years no, old. Like- and all that city, he's got a good mentality. And um, but like have like a father son and daughter game against the mascots or something like that. Just something that the fans can get into because well they weren't too into that game. And the only way you're going to get a good game is have the Stanley Cup champions play the All-Stars. Bobby Hall uh, died, and uh, I know we usually leave that to the end, but uh, there's some funny stories we have. Tim, you've got some funny stories of uh, Bobby Hall, and he was on the Grapevine Show. Boy, he's a good-looking guy, i tell you that. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he we had him on the Grapevine Show in the early 1980s, and you know the strange thing with that was uh, Ralph Mellonby was executive producer at the time, and he had the stick that Bobby Hall scored the 50th goal, his 50th goal. I, yeah. And you gave it to him. And Bobby Hall said, I never knew where that went. It was supposed to go into the Hall of Fame, and it disappeared. <laughs> and, and you gave it to him. So, uh, But he was really good. And, uh, of course, the one thing that Bobby – two things Bobby Hall was known for was his, his slap shot, right? Yeah. And his curved stick. So you asked him about that, and he's got uh, – uh, and then he's got a funny story about um, Jerry Cheevers, who was didn't like Bobby Hall winding up. Well, nobody it. liked Bobby Hall when he wound up. So this was uh, Bobby Hall uh, on the grapevine talking about his stick and Jerry Cheevers. Nice. Yeah, and I want to show you. I was going to ask you about the curve. Now, who's the first guy? You say you had the curve. I'm cur- not guilty. Yeah, who was the first guy? It was Makita. Stan had uh, a terrible habit. If he didn't like a stick, he'd just lean on it and break it. And I said, Stan, and I don't know how many times, I said, there are 400 little guys out there that would just love to have one of your sticks. I said, don't break it. Hang it on my rack, and I'll see that someone gets it. So we're practicing one day. He didn't like his stick. Tried to lean on. He didn't have enough weight. It was late in the season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he went over to the door at our, our bench door, and he rammed it in the door between the hinges. Yeah. And he reared on it and reared on it. And finally, it split just a little, eh? It split in the blade, and the top part flew out, and the bottom stayed in. So while he was going downstairs, you know, in Chicago, we had yeah. to go downstairs to the dressing room, he grabbed a puck out in front of the net, and he fired it in, and I'm watching him. In the net he goes, fishes it out, come back. he came back again, fired it in. He did this six times. So I said to the guys in the bench, some of the guys were practicing down at the other end, I said, look at Makita, he's really kookaloo now. <laughs> I said, look at what he's doing. So he came up, and I said, Stan, what were you doing? firing the puck in the net, fishing it out, firing it. He said, Bobby, he said, when I tried to break my stick, he said, I put a hook in the blade, and he said, can you ever fire it? So after practice, he said, I'm going to call Northland and get uh, half a dozen made up with a little hook in the blade. And I said, well, order me a half a dozen too. And from then on, it just went from Ooh. a little bit. That's, that that murder, was, sir, and what? That, and at times, it was even worse. Where did you develop that slap shot, though? I mean, that was murder. First of all, let me tell you a story about Cheevers. Jerry Cheevers told me this story, and it's a true story. It was a power play, and the puck would, correct me if I'm wrong, the power play, you had a guy just sifting the puck over uh-huh. nice to you, a nice feather, and you'd hammer it, and he'd be ducking, hoping you'd score. <laughs> Finally, you put it over five times, and the only way it stopped is you hit the crossbar and went in the crowd. He says, I never prayed so hard in my life. Is that a true there story? There was another, yes. But there was another time, even funnier than that, Don. I got it out the point, and uh, the, one of the uh, defenders came out to check me, and I reared back, and I faked it. And I went around him, and he slid past me. And I went in another, oh, 10 or 15 feet, and I wound up again. And one of the defensemen thought that he'd take a chance at it, and he slid out. And I managed to get around him. Now I'm about from here, uh, maybe over to, to Jimmy there, out in front of the net. Now I look up. I, I start to wind up and I look up and the net is vacant. <laughs> and I, I start to laugh and Cheevers had gone over and the defenseman gave me a wide berth and he gave me about three quarters of the net. Cheevers was over hiding behind his defense. <laughs> and I fired it in the open side. He hated but he, you. Oh, but he, what a great competitor. Yeah, he but he hated that. He used to tell stories about you all the time. 
Yeah, so you, you, you know, Dad, Jerry Cheevers didn't like high slap shots, did he? No, I, I told about the time that uh, Steve shut. Uh, I was coaching. Uh, we were on Team Canada of uh, 76, the greatest team it ever put together. And uh, I pulled him in an exhibition game. And he said, you know, Grapes, this is the first time any gut buddy has ever been pulled in an exhibition game. I said, yeah, Jerry. But I said, Steve, shut come down on you and it almost hit you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and all the players laughed. Cheevers didn't like that too much. Yeah. But just to kind of give what, what Bobby Hall did, because a lot of, like, when everybody talks about the great goal scorers now, they, they seem to leave out Phil Esposito and Bobby Hall. And Bobby Hall, if you look at his record, boy, he set a lot of records. Yeah, so he was the first player to score more than 50 goals in a season, which he scored, and he scored 54 that year. And, you know, can I jump in, Tim? Yeah. I, I, he, he used to sign autographs. I remember I was doing the color, and he was he – was, no, I wasn't doing the color. I was sitting watching the game. He – Stood for the whole warm up and signed autographs. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah, and then for that year that he he broke was the first player to get over fifty goals in a season. He set a record for the most points with ninety seven, and in four seasons, get this, from sixty five to sixty nine, he scored two hundred and eight goals. He doesn't get the respect he does. You know, and in his last season in NHL, he had fifty goals. He won three Art Ross, two Hearts, and a Stanley Cup. And then in 72, he went to the uh, WHA, yeah. and that's why he wasn't on the Summit 72 Summit Series. Oh, really? So oh. if they if you had Bobby Orr and Bobby Hall on that team, I don't think it goes to eight <laughs> no, games. I think I think one of the guys, I, I think it was Peter Mahalovich, said, it's a good job we didn't have Orr. And the guy said, well, what do you mean that? He said, it wouldn't have gone eight games. <laughs> so and he was the first guy to get a million-dollar contract. He got uh, the Winnipeg Jets, signed him for a million bucks. Well, that uh, made the league. Bum, yeah, a million dollar signing bonus and then a 10 year contract for like a million seven. And you know, in years. Chicago. Oh, the fans just loved him in Chicago. Yeah, oh, they, they, well, why wouldn't you? Of course, sets records and uh, good looking guy. Boy, he was a good looking guy. Yeah, and then his brother Dennis. Never got the uh, no. recognition that he that he uh, that he did. I mean, he was a good hockey he player. Was, he really was, and you know, played on the seventy two Summit, so he had to be that good. And he never kind of got the recognition. You, you hear the story he told? Can I tell it? Now the score is tied. Was it tied, Tim? It was tied. Game eight against the Russians in the seventy two series. But what? Two minutes to go in the game. Yeah, it was two minutes to go in the game. And and Paul Henderson wasn't like that. He was on the bench, and he kept hollering at Dennis Hall, come on off, come on off, get off, get off. And he jumped on and got the winning goal. And uh, De Dennis Hall said, How, why did you keep hollering at me? He says, well, God told me. And God, you know, you, I'm only kidding. You know, you, we're only kidding here. He says, God told me to get to get – to, to get you off, to get you off, to get to keep calling. And he says, that's a lie. And Bobby, you know, Paul Henderson, lying. He's, he's, he looked around, he never saw Bobby Orr anywhere. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw yeah, that uh, in. And then you got to see Bobby's son, can't forget Brett. He's one of the greatest goal scorers, oh, too. And, the Golden Jet and the Golden Brett. I know, both very good looking. It was a good yeah. gene pool, that's for sure. Well, he was. they were both good hockey players. You know that, you know that Brent Hall would never score an open net? No. No, he would never him. score an open net. He passed the puck, he'd do anything. He wouldn't score an open net. What did he get, 72 goals? I think. Something like that. It was Some, just, and then, you know, we're, we're talking about Bobby would getting up, but remember he got, he was just, him and, and Adam Oates, they were just, a, you couldn't stop the two. That was unbelievable. And then St. Louis wouldn't sign Adam Oates, and Brett Hall went to the management of St. Louis said, what what are you out? And they said like a million dollars. No, it, I wasn't that much. It was two hundred fifty. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars was the difference. And Brett said, "Take the two fifty from my salary and give it to Adam." And St. Mike, Louis, Mike Keenan. And uh, they said no. And then uh, Adam Oates went to Boston and set the world set on the, fire there with the assist. Should should never have let it. Should never gone here to St. Louis. Well, you couldn't. It was tough playing against those guys. Yeah, Bobby Hall was one of the greatest. Uh, all you have to do is look at the stats. And um, didn't he one time really almost kill Terry Sawchuck? You know, I remember reading about that. He let a shot go, and but and and one thing that Terry had was a bad shoulder. And he hit him on the shoulder, and he skated by him, and he said, "Stay down. There's more of that coming." And boy, you know, that's all Terry saw Chuck needed. 
Because he was he was the best goaltender I ever saw. Yeah, so Bobby Hall slap shot. Back then they were basically wearing like windbreakers for yeah. equipment. So and he got up and he played and he was fantastic. Bobby Hall, all you have to do is check the records and you'll see he was one of the greatest hockey players who ever lived. So Cindy and Dad, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Spreads.ca. They're a Canadian-owned online casino and sportsbook. And if you sign up now and use the promo Grapes, they'll match your deposit up to $500. You get 10 spins on the big wheel for some big money. And your first sports bet, they'll spot you 25 bucks. So if you have an inkling who's going to win the... Super Bowl, and you sign up, and they'll give you a spot of twenty five bucks. So they're uh, and all the money is uh, Canadian, which is biggie. So when it's good, Cindy, and and don't forget they give a lot of money to Cindy. Yeah, yeah, they gave a lot of money to the Don Cherry's Pet Rescue, and they uh, which was nice to them. You don't and, hear other uh, bet places uh, doing that for no, charity, you sure no, because I'm sure if they did, they'd advertise it. it yeah. But uh, yeah, so you have to wonder uh, how why much they, they give you, Cindy. But close to twenty thousand dollars. Close that, to twenty. That helps. That helps a lot of dogs. I mean, you know, I mean that that's big. And I mean, uh, you know, there's as you know, there's a lot of places you can go now. But you'd think you'd want to support people that support charities and Canadian dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dad, we're going to talk about. Uh, we, I said last week we're going to talk about a, a fascinating article on your clothes, but I think we're uh, going to we don't have enough time, so we'll we'll do that maybe next week or somewhere okay. down the line. All right, good but enough. I got we got two questions from the Twitterverse and uh, Facebook world, uh, both with about the Buffalo Sabers. Okay, so the first one is this is Dave from Buffalo. Can the Sabres make the playoffs? And he said, you know, going into the All-Star break, we're only four points back of the Capitals and with three games on hand. Three games on hand. And one point behind the Penguins. And, and they're playing pretty good at Buffalo. So can Buffalo make the playoffs? Well, Tig Thompson is hurt. He's their best player. Well, I don't know, Bodo. I, I, like, I like that Owen Powers he's got there. He looks like he, he played in the league for, for 100 years. Well, I think, you know, the goaltending's got to keep up, but... Here, here's here's the thing. Oh, this is what I think, that Boston is hoping Buffalo gets in. Because if Buffalo gets in, they'll get the last playoff spot. Yeah. And I think Boston would rather play Buffalo because I think Buffalo would be happy to be in the playoffs. Yeah, I think they're just happy to be in the playoffs. But it looks like Boston is either going to play right now Washington or Pittsburgh, and that could be scary. Ooh, that day. And Pittsburgh been kind of... Bl- Kind of going along, going along, and Washington been going along, and why Washington is getting stronger and stronger all the time. Right. So, so what? What do you? What do you think? Buffalo makes it or not? Well, it, <laughs> well, I'd like to see them make it because I cheer for Buffalo all the time. I, I like that owner. He spends the money and he never gets any result, and they still got empty seats, and it would be jammed if they made the playoffs. You know one thing, Tim, that you brought up that I I did not know. I well, maybe I didn't want to know, is that that uh, Vancouver is playing three coaches now. They're playing Bruce for the right. rest of the year, and they're playing Tockett. Yep. Yeah, and they're playing Travis Green. Yep. So, um, and they got they traded Bo Horvath. And you know, if Demko had been playing like he did last year. Um, Bruce would still be the still have his job. Yeah, Travis Green might still have a job if he yeah, played. Yeah, Travis Green. Yeah, if he had to play like he had. So is that a reflection of the GM? Like, if you're the owner and you're paying all these guys, at some point you got to say maybe it's not the coach. You know, like I somewhere I'm, along the line, somebody's have to say if Rick Tockett doesn't stay at least at two or three years, you, you know something's wrong. You know, I and I know a lot. Of People listen in Vancouver, and they might not like this. I think Tockett went into Rutherford and said, get rid of Horvath. I don't think it's any coincidence that they had him all and this. And he was at the press conference. Right, that he had all the, you know, all this time to trade him and all that, and two games in after Tockett, yeah. you know, because you think, oh, well, you know, have Rick work with him and yeah. try to get him. He said, I, I think Tockett went in and said, I don't want him. Get rid of him. Do you know, I'll, I'll tell you uh, this. I'm sure you don't know this. As, you know, I said before, I don't like the kid. And uh, he was the one. Remember how when you got, you know, Hockey Night in Canada got rid of you and all that stuff. And they were trying, the press was really trying to get the players to talk bad about you. I mean, he was one of the few that bad you. Oh, he did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's why well, I'm glad I hope they him. traded him to some... Timbuktu. Well, he went or, to the Islanders, which now the Islanders might yeah, make a Yeah, they're a pretty good him. club yeah, now. Yeah. Lou yeah, Amarello. Because he's, he's a pretty good player. Oh, he, yeah, he's but a good player. But he didn't player. do anything out there, did he? He got 30 goals, but didn't. He's, yeah, never led the team anywhere. And, and oh, there you again, go. Again, I, I just, 
I just, you know, there's no such things as coincidences, and I can't believe two or three games into Rick Tockett's t- coaching tenure yeah, two in. that they got rid of him. Yeah, that yeah. says something about him, Dad. Okay, well, I, I didn't know. He was, <laughs> but anyhow, all I'm saying is Tockett's a good coach. He, he is a good coach, and uh, he should stay there. I hope he stays there for at least three years till he gets the team straightened out. Okay, this is from a T-Dog. That's an interesting name. Hey, Grapes. How are the Bruins first in the league yet have only one guy in the top 50 scoring? That reminds me of the, the, one of the clubs I had. I was going to say that. Pasternak at third and Marchand at 50th. I, I think we had two guys in the top 20. And I remember in Chicago, I picked up the thing in the, and on the cover they had. I forget who they had. And they ne- never even mentioned us. And here we were first place. I think we'd lost only 18 games that year. And uh, there was nothing about us in the paper. Well, it's, isn't that a reflection of a well-rounded team that has strengths throughout? Well, I don't know. We well, had... I mean, you look at it that, you know, you can say T-Dog, they have the number one goalie. So yeah. it goes to show you, they have the number one goalie in the league and they're running away with the league. And they have two guys in the top 50 scoring. And look at Edmonton, they got the top. I know they... all about if you have a good goaltender, you can go a long way. When I was in Boston, I had three goaltenders, Ronnie Graham, and remember, and, and Jill Chilbert. Uh, we had to get rid of one, and Jerry Cheevers. And I was, uh, I was champ of the year, coach of the year. I went to Colorado, and I had Hardy Astrum, and I was champ of the year. Oh, geez, Dad, we forgot. To wish you a happy, happy birthday. birthday. Today, it's Act Sunday. You know, in our, our family, we, talking to Richard this morning, he phoned me, and I said, did we ever celebrate? He said, oh, we did when we were kids. But anyhow, yes. thank you very much for... Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. Yeah, I'll ask the 89 question. years old. Well, I was going to say, I was going to ask you the question that when I meet people, oh, your father's Don Cherry. Oh, no, no. Yeah, how old's your father now? How old's your father now? This is like a, so 98, no, it's 89. 89, holy. So I'll tell you, Dad, I got you a birthday. I got your present. I got you a smooth jazz CD. Oh, now, yeah. Like, oh, what, tell the story. But <laughs> I know you wanted the music that the Weather Channel Plays yeah. on because it's yeah. smooth jazz, but it's good. Well, first of all, I said, Well, I don't know what kind of music they play, so I went on Spotify oh, yeah. and I typed in Weather Channel. Well, and sure enough, they came up with the, the playing list of the Weather Channel. And then I looked, and sure enough, they have a CD says the mu- music to relax by from the Weather Channel music. Wow, well, so, oh, is that right? Yeah, eh? so Who would I would think that I don't, that's unbelievable. So I ordered it to you, and I listen to it all but the time. They let me down. It takes three weeks for delivery. From Not Ab- from Amazon. From Amazon. Three weeks three from weeks Amazon? for delivery. Wow, so, that must be a rarity. Dad. So in a couple of March, we'll get it from you. But, oh, okay. th- but that was fine. Well, I'll, be, I'll be excited then. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're a pretty hard person to buy for. Yep. So anyway, happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday, Dad. Thank you very much.